In this recursion problem, we're asked for each call to the following method indicate what console output is produced. We're first going to look at we're passed through here, and we're passed through a 1. So when we look at our method, we see that it is public void, so it's not returning anything. Mystery 1 is its name, and we have the parameter integer of 1, so integers are going to be passed in. For here, we're going to have a 1 passed in, and we have these two statements. If n is less than or equal to 1, it's just going to print out the number. For this mystery 1, we see that a 1 is passed in. That means it's going to go into the if statement, and it's just going to print out 1, which is why 1 is our answer. For the second question, we're given the parameter 4. Since our initial number is 4, we're going to have to use our else statement because our number is greater than 1. We're going to see that we have recursion right here. So after we look at this recursion, we also need to look at what follows it. So we have the system.out.print, a comma, and the number itself. What this is going to look like is, since our number is 4 currently, we're going to have 4 and a comma. And then whatever is in front of it is going to be our recursion. This is first passed through 4, and then when we go back up here, since we have to divide it by 2, it's going to be passed to 2. Now, we have to go into their else statement again, and we're going to be given a 2. So we're going to sys out 2 with a comma in front of it. And then this is going to go back into here because it's recursion. 2 divided by 2 is just 1. And now we need to go into our if statement since the value is the same as 1. And we're left with 1, 2, 4 as the answer. For this next one, we're past the parameter of 16. That means we're going to hop into our else statement since it is greater than 1. We're first going to divide 16 by 2. We're going to go back in here, and that's going to be 8. But we also have to deal with the following code, whatever follows after the recursion. So we have to output our current number, which is 16, with a comma in front of it. Next, we're going to come back here, and our number is 8. We have to put a comma in front of that. Then we need to divide it by 2, pull it back up here, and that's going to be 4. And so 4 is going to be our new number. We have to output that with a comma in front of it, and then divide it by 2 and put it back into the method. So we're going to get 2, meaning that our number is going to be 2. We're going to output that with a comma in front of it, and then because of recursion, put it back into the method, dividing it by 2, which will yield 1. And then we're going to hop into our if statement, and it's just going to be 1. And that is our entire answer. The same thing is going to happen for this one and the last one. We'll do the last one. So if we get 100, we are just going through the method. We skip the if statement because it is not less than or equal to 1. We have to go into our else statement, and that is going to give us 100. We have to divide it by 2, so going back into the method, it's going to give us 50. So we're going to print, because we have to, after we look at our recursion part, we have to also look at the following code, and that gets outputted last. So we can write this as 100 with a comma in front of it, and then we can have placeholders for whatever else we need. For that, we're going to have 50 with a comma in front of it, so like this. We're going to divide it by 2, so that's 25 and then we're going to get 25 as our next number. Since it's an int, we're not going to get 12.5. Instead, we're going to get 12.5, but we're going to round that down, so we're going to get 12, like this. We also have to remember to put 25 in a comma here. 12 is our next number, and then we have to divide this by 2. Also, we have to make sure to put it in our output, and um, dividing it by 2 gives us a 6. And then 6 divided by 2 is 3. So we have a 3 here. We get 1.5 dividing, dividing by 2. We have to round that down, so that's 1. We also have to make sure to put all of these in our method. So we're going to have a 6 and a 1 here. And then we're just going to have to go into our if statement. And we're going to have a 1. Actually, we need to... We put our 12, we put our 6, but we forgot the 3. So we have to have a 3. And then we're going to print out a 1 like this. 
And what recursion really does is it's actually going through all of these steps, so all of these steps that we did, and then it's actually supposed to unwind it. So once it reaches the base case like this, that stops it from rec from um, completing recursion, it actually goes the opposite way. And that's how everything gets printed out. So when it gives it back to the output, it's, it's really saying, and that's why we leave, read from left to right, it's gonna go from bottom to top. So once it finishes its base case, which is one, it's gonna go back to three and then three to six, and then like this for all of them, just to output it as it is right here.